we are going to be reading from Galatians 6, verses 1 to 10. That is Galatians 6, verses 1 to 10. We are going to be finishing off the book of Galatians here this morning. And I titled today's message, Bear One Another's Burdens. Bear One Another's Burdens. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then let his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. And especially those who are of the household of faith. May God bless the reading of his word. Last week we talked about the importance of of continually walking by the Spirit so we will not give in to the desires of the flesh. And we talked about how the flesh, which is our fallen sinful nature, is at war with the Holy Spirit which indwells inside believers. The flesh and the Spirit are opposed to one another. And there is this constant battle between the flesh and the Spirit. We talk about what it looks like to live according to the flesh and what it looks like to live according to the spirit. And in chapter 6, it's a continuation from chapter 5. And in this passage we have before us, we see the importance of helping and supporting one another. Paul says in Galatians 6 of verse 1, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. In life we will all be tempted to sin. We will all be tempted to live life our way instead of God's way. We will be tempted to live according to the flesh instead of living according to the spirit. And we will all face temptations in life. You want to know what Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 17 and verse 1? Temptations to sin are sure to come. Jesus didn't say they might come or there's a good possibility that they will come. He said temptations to sin are sure to come. And in the book of James in chapter 1 and verse 13, James says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. James doesn't say if he is tempted, he says when he is tempted, implying that we will all be tempted in life. And in this passage we have before us, it is about a brother or a sister who has fallen into sin. If anyone is caught in any transgression, this is someone who is given into temptation and has sinned against God. The question is, who should restore that person? And how should that person be restored? The first thing I want to talk about is that the restorer should be a, a person who is spiritual. So who should restore the brother or sister who has fallen into sin? Paul says, you who are spiritual should restore him. The restorer should be a person who is spiritual. A person who is living a godly life in Christ Jesus. And you might be saying, well, what does that look like in the life of a believer? Well, we talked a little bit about it last week. It's someone who is walking by the Spirit. Who is not gratifying the desires of the flesh. A restorer should be someone who is walking by the Spirit. 
Someone who is living by the Spirit. Who is filled with the Spirit. This is not referring to an elite group or a class of Christians. This is simply talking about a mature believer. Someone who is walking by the Spirit and is producing the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. How should the restorer restore him or her who has fallen into sin? Paul says, in his spirit of gentleness. Gentleness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. The restorer should restore him or her in his spirit of gentleness. When someone falls into sin, the goal is for restoration. We want to help that person back up to their feet with a spirit of gentleness. The passage that Karen read out for us earlier from John 8 was about a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And Jesus wanted to restore her and ended up telling her, go. And from now on, sin no more. Sin is so serious, it is so destructive that if someone falls into sin, we, we want to restore that person with a spirit of gentleness. If someone falls down, we want to help them back up to their feet. James 5, 19 and verse 20 says, James 5, verses 19 to 20 says, My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back his sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So the restorer should be spiritual. The restorer should have a spirit of gentleness. And the restorer needs to be careful not to fall into sin. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him. How should he restore him? In his spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. We will all be tempted, and this is why we need to be careful when we come alongside someone. Because we too can fall into temptation. And Paul is saying, I want you to be careful, lest you fall into the same temptation yourself. Lest you too be tempted. If someone has a drinking problem, do you think it is wise for that person to come alongside someone who is struggling with alcohol? Well, of course not. What might the danger in that be? A person might go to come alongside someone, and he might even have good intentions, but next thing you know, he might fall into the same temptation himself. It would be better for someone else to come alongside that person. One of the books I was reading talked about a person who went and tried to convince his friends to stop drinking on the weekend. And he had good motives. He wanted to go and tell them about Jesus. But you want to know what happened? He ended up getting drunk himself. And this is what Paul is saying. Be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Our pride can lead to our downfall. We might think to ourselves, oh, I don't need to worry about that. Or, I'm not going to fall into that. Remember what happened to Peter. He told Christ that he would never deny him. He said, I will not deny you. And Peter denied Christ three times. And the first time Peter denied Christ was to a servant girl, according to Luke 22, verse 57. Listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, verses 12 to 13. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands, take heed, lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. When we are tempted, God will always provide us a way of escape. It is up to us on whether or not we will take that way of escape. So when the restorer is coming alongside someone, he or she needs to be careful not to fall into sin. If someone who has faithfully attended church week after week hasn't shown up to church in about a month, it might be a good thing to give that person a call or to check in on them. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we are to care for one another. We are to bear one another's burdens. Burdens in the Greek is baros in Galatians 6 verse 2, which literally means a weight, a heavy weight. 
and figuratively it represents any hardships that are hard to bear. Burdens are difficulties and problems that people have trouble with in life. And we all have burdens that we carry around with us through life. Burdens can come in various shapes and sizes. Some people carry around the burden of loneliness. I think it is so easy for people to isolate themselves, especially in the midst of COVID-19, where there are people who feel isolated and all alone. Some people in life are struggling with grief. Other burdens that people carry around with them, it could be their health. I know some people are unable to be at church here this morning because of their health. There are various burdens that people will carry around with them. And God does not expect us to carry them alone. We have brothers and sisters in Christ that we can share our burdens with. By coming alongside someone, we can lift up and lighten the person's load. When I was in the military, back in battle school, we had to carry these big, thick logs that looked like telephone poles around on our shoulders. And none of us had the strength to carry it around by ourselves. It was far too heavy. But you know, we were able to carry it around as a team. For the training, the logs were not meant to be carried alone. My friends, there are burdens in life that are not meant to be carried alone. There are burdens in life that are far too heavy for us to carry by ourselves. Let us bear one another's burdens. Romans 15 and verse 1 says, We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Maybe there is someone we know that we can come alongside and help lighten the load. Maybe it is giving someone a phone call or visiting someone or offering a word of encouragement or telling someone how much they mean to us. Is there anyone who needs our help? Because when we bear each other's burdens, we are following in the footsteps of Christ because Christ was the ultimate burden bearer. Christ was the one who bore the full weight of our sin at the cross. God loved us so much that He allowed His one and only Son to die in our place, to be the sacrifice for our sins. The Bible says, For our sake He made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. When Christ was on the cross, God looked at Jesus. God treated Jesus as if He lived the life that we live. And when we trusted Christ Jesus as our Lord, God turned around and looked at us as if we lived the life that Christ lived. Our sins were transferred to Christ's account and His righteousness. His perfect life in which He lived was credited to our account. And Christ's sacrifice is made available to everyone who will repent and believe in the gospel. Christ was the one who bore our greatest burden, and that burden was our sin. He bore our guilt and He bore our shame at the cross. We don't have to carry that around with us. In Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Instead of us trying to earn our salvation through human effort or through works, let us fall upon the mercy of Christ where we will find rest, rest for our souls. We can bring our burdens to the Lord. Psalm 55 and verse 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. We can bring our burdens to Christ. And as a church, we are to live in community, bearing one another's burdens. Galatians 6 of verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now a common question that gets raised for this passage that we are looking at today 
is in verse 2 it tells us to bear one another's burdens. And in verse 5 it tells us for each will have to bear his own load. And you might be saying, well, which one is it? Are we to bear one another's burdens or are we to bear our own load? I would say that it is both. There are two different Greek words that are used for burden and load. The Greek word baros is used in verse 2, which means a heavy weight. The other word that is used in verse 6 for load is fortion, referring to a man's pack. Going back to the military illustration, when I was in the military, that log was far too heavy for me to carry by myself. We had to carry it as a team. Whereas for my own personal gear, like my helmet, my rifle, and pack vest, was something that I had to carry on my own. And in the same way, there are burdens that are too heavy for us to carry by ourselves. And then there are loads that we can carry individually as not everything in life is a crisis. A person who loses someone in their family or a person who is struggling with their health because of their age is a burden that is not meant to be carried alone. As believers, we are to help our brothers and sisters in Christ with burdens that cannot be carried alone. If I'm tired because I stayed up late, late the night before watching movies, that is a load that I can carry by myself or daily activities. And the Christian life is not meant to be lived alone. We are to love one another and put Christ first in everything that we do in life. 1 John 4 verse 21 says, And He has given us this command, Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. People will know that we are Christians by our Christ-like love. Galatians 6 of verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. Paul is saying, listen, I do not want you to be led astray. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will we also reap. Each and every single one of us are sowing in life. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. What a person sows is what a person will reap. If we sow to the flesh, we will reap destruction. If we sow to the Spirit, we'll from the Spirit reap eternal life. And each and every single one of us in life is either sowing to the flesh or we are sowing to the Spirit. We are either living for the flesh or we are living for the Spirit, living by the Spirit. And our flesh is our fallen, sinful nature that was passed down to us from Adam. And if you were wondering what it looks like to live according to the flesh, Paul tells us back in chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. As I said, these chapters are connected. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, Fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, division, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul makes it clear that those who live that kind of lifestyle will not inherit the kingdom of God. People who live that kind of lifestyle show by their outward actions that they do not know Christ or have a relationship with Him. And if we claim to have faith, and if it doesn't change the way we live, if it doesn't change the way that we treat others, it is because our faith is dead. And we know that dead faith cannot save. True faith will be followed by obedience to the Word of God. When Christians sin, they will be miserable because sin robs us of our joy. People may think that if they go outside God's boundaries, that it will bring them joy, that it will bring them fulfillment. It is the complete opposite. It is when we are walking with Christ that we have the most joy in life. And we know this as believers. We will reap what we sow, just like if we were to plant pumpkin seeds in the ground, we will reap pumpkins. And we are all sowing in life, which raises the question, what seeds are we planting? Are we sowing to the Spirit? Or are we sowing to the flesh? 
We want to sow to the Spirit. We want to walk by the Spirit so we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. We want to live Spirit-filled lives that will point people to Christ. And if someone falls into sin, we want to come alongside that person and help them up to their feet with a spirit of gentleness. We want to help that person back up. We see that the restorer should be spiritual. The restorer should have a spirit of gentleness. And the restorer needs to be careful not to fall into sin. And the last thing I want to talk about is that Jesus Christ is the ultimate restorer. Jesus is the ultimate restorer. Our relationship with God was broken because of sin. Ever since Adam and Eve rebelled against God by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that was placed in the middle of the garden, sin and death entered the world through Adam. And we all have a sinful nature that was passed down through Adam, and we have all sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were alienated from God. We were standing in opposition to God. We were at enmity with God. And we were under the wrath of God against sin. And the judgment of God was hanging above our heads. Our relationship with God was completely broken. We needed a mediator. We needed someone who could restore our relationship with God. And that mediator is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Christ lived the life that we should have lived, and died the death that we should have died. And we know that death could not hold him. He had a bodily resurrection three days later, and he is seated at the right hand of God, where he is interceding for us. Jesus is the ultimate restorer, because he restored the greatest relationship that could ever be restored, and that is between God and his people. His people are the ones who repent of their sins and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And the good news is that we can have a restored relationship with God through faith, in Jesus Christ. And if you were here this morning and you do not know Christ, the question I want to ask you is simply this. Are you willing to turn away from your sins and trust in Christ Jesus as your Lord here this morning? To take out your cross and to follow Christ as Lord? Jesus is the ultimate restorer. You can have a restored relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Because if we leave this life without knowing Christ, we will fall under the judgment of God. And if you are here this morning and you would like to talk to someone about taking that step of faith, I'll be around after the service. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you want someone to pray with. Just come and see me.